Sure, anytime. So, hello. Good evening. Thank you, everybody, for coming out on such a wonderful sunny day. Liquid sunshine. Liquid sunshine, yes, yes, yes. So, I know a lot of people here, but uh, there's some faces I don't recognize. So, I'll just really, really briefly introduce myself so people know who's up here in Yappin. Uh, my name is Dr. Brian Schrader. I'm a chiropractor by trade and profession, but I have taken extensive amounts of postgraduate training in uh, nutritional science, you know, herbal therapy, enzyme therapy, homeopathy, etc., etc. And I have a real passion and an interest for nutrition and nutraceuticals, which is kind of a, a new wave of things that are happening as we do more and more research on how nutritional molecules affect us. Uh, I've, I've been here before and done other talks about other aspects of aging and how to combat or slow down the aging process. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this new stuff, this new information that we're going to share tonight because as I look at it and study it, I realize that this is kind of the bottom line, you know, so to speak, in that, you know, there's there's lots of other stuff that we've looked at. All right, come on in. Grab one of each of these. Uh, there's lots of other stuff that we've looked at, and everybody knows about the importance of antioxidants and quenching free radicals. And uh, last time I was here, I think we were talking about things like benfodiamine and you know advanced glycation end products and what happens to sugars that uh, contribute to aging. And uh, so we talked about a lot of that different stuff. But the, the neat thing is all of those things that we talk about when it comes to aging really all relate to this, you know, in the sense that they affect this and this is the thing that really, really causes aging. And that's something called telomeres. Has anybody here heard of telomeres? Oh, a few people have. Okay, cool. Uh, so this might be a little bit of a review or maybe some additional information for those of you who already know something about it. Uh, hopefully it will be further information for them and for people who haven't heard anything about it at all. This will let you know what's, what's happening and what it's all about. Um, quite often when I do these talks, I'll put together sort of a PowerPoint presentation and we go through it and talk about it and so forth. But uh, this is something that's a little bit complex. So since there are some really good videos already in existence on the internet, I just said, I'm not going to waste a lot of time trying to replicate something that's already been done. And so I just brought in a laptop, hooked up to the internet, and we're going to just show you uh, some video stuff that explains quite well, you know, what we're talking about with the telomeres, and then we'll go into it a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to show this one. This is actually straight off of ABC News, um, talking about reversing aging and talking about some research that was done on mice, but uh, you know how it uh, pertains to people. Yes, the question. Uh, how is that word spelled? Telomeres. Yes. T E L O M E R E S. That's why you're writing on the back side of it. Oh, okay. So it's on the other page. Oh, yeah. I didn't want to be ahead. So that doesn't stop in the news for moments. We're here for two minutes. Here's Sharon Alfonso reporting. Okay, good. Save reporting. Want me to turn the lights off? Yeah. In the movie Cocoon, it's a swimming pool that turns back the clock for a group of senior citizens. But now, researchers have found a way not just to stop, but reverse the aging process. The key is something called a telomere. Y'all have them. They're the tips or caps of your chromosomes seen here in yellow. This is what it looks like in a young adult. But as you grow older, the telomeres become damaged and frayed, and as they stop working, we start aging experiencing things like hearing and memory loss. Scientists took mice who were prematurely aged, added an enzyme, and essentially turned their telomeres back on. You can see it. Before the enzyme, after.
after their brain function improved, their fertility was restored. It was a, a remarkable uh, reversal of the aging process. Look at this picture. The mouse on the right has bad skin, gray hair, and is balding. But the one on the left had its telomeres flipped back on. And you can see that uh, essentially you now have a dark coat color, uh, that the hair uh, is restored, that the coat has a nice healthy sheen to it. Even more dramatic, the change in brain size. This is before the mice had 75% of a normal brain, like a patient with severe Alzheimer's. But after the telomeres were reactivated, the brain returns to normal size. As for humans, while it is just one factor, scientists now say by looking at our blood cells and measuring those telomeres, you can get a better idea of how well you'll age. The longer the telomere, the better the chances for a more graceful aging. But as for tinkering with them and turning back our aging process, researchers say we still have a long way to go. Sharon Alfonsi, ABC News, New York. into their products. Uh, of course, one of the big things that makes what happens in mice different than what happens in people, of course, is that people are stupid and they have lots of bad habits, you know. So they'll eat all kinds of crap and take in all sorts of nasty chemicals, work in jobs where they're absorbing bad chemicals out of the atmosphere and so forth. They have way too much stress, they don't drink enough water, they don't get enough sleep, you know, they don't exercise enough. So, you know, and all of these things, of course, are shown to have a negative effect on our bodies anyway, and they obviously all have a negative effect on our telomeres, right? And <clears throat> so we, we can look at people and you can measure. Um, if anybody is interested, if you contact our clinic, uh, there is a, a lab in California where you can send a blood sample and they will actually measure your telomeres and tell you you know, what your biological age is as far as your telomeres is concerned, you know. Um, I'm, I'm doing it, I haven't got the results back yet, but because I'm on a product that contains the telomerase, I want to see just how well it works, you know. So I want to find out sort of where I'm at right now as far as my telomeres are concerned and then be taking the product for several months and get the blood retested to see how much of a difference there is, if there is a difference, right? So, Does Lori do the testing? No, no. It's a lab in California. We, I mean, she'd probably take the blood here. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> but we have to send the blood down to California. It's a lab in California that, that does the actual test. It's about three hundred dollars U.S. Take it. <laughs> they get it done. But you know, 
and that's up to you whether you decide it's important enough, you know, yeah. to have that to have that done. Uh, but uh, you, know, you, can, you can get it done. So you know, there's there's been lots and lots and lots of research done on telomeres and on telomerase. Now it turns out that there is an enzyme that we make called telomerase that restores or protects the telomeres at the ends of your DNA strands. And like so many other things, it's a, it's a vicious cycle, catch 22, whatever you want to call it. As you age, you know, <laughs> you make less telomerase. And so your, your telomeres are less protected. Now it turns out that <clears throat> there is a natural source of telomerase, which is uh, an astragalus plant that grows in Siberia. But it has the telomerase enzyme that's essentially exactly the same as the one that's in people. So you know, we can, and, and most of this stuff has been done utilizing that, that source of enzymes. So uh, there are there are companies, like the one that maybe the product she is using. Uh, this one is called TA65. They were one of the first ones to, to get in. Um, the gentleman that you're going to see in the next video, who was involved with the, the research that led to them getting the Nobel Prize for physiology and medicine for their research on telomerase, um, had actually worked with these people initially and they were using his you know, patented process and everything. Uh, but this stuff is incredibly expensive. Uh, a bottle of 90 capsules at Kelly's was over $200. Mm -hmm. So uh, he, he got together with uh, some other people. Anybody here ever heard of a company called Isogenics? It's a supplement company, a multi-level company. Uh, they, they got, he got together with the formulator for Isogenics because they wanted to be able to put the formula together and get it to people in a form that was a lot less expensive so more people could afford to do it. But what they, what they kind of figured out, as you see if you read through some of the, the paperwork that you got, is that, you know, telomerase by itself is effective to a point at restoring telomeres and protecting them from further damage, but there are other nutrients that are really important too. And if you make up a product that contains not only telomerase, but the other nutrients that seem to be the most effective, things like green tea and milk thistle, you know, and there are, there are other things that, vitamin C, you know, vitamin E, that are very, very effective at helping to protect telomeres. If you put together a product that contains not only the telomerase, but also the other nutrients that have been shown to be beneficial in restoring and protecting telomeres, you get a much better result. Okay. So uh, now this product here that they make is actually like it's like a package that has a bunch of vitamins and minerals and essential fatty acids, you know, fish oils and things like that. In. Plus it has the telomerase, uh, and so it all comes together as a package, and you could get that. Or they do have the telomerase product as a standalone, but even that isn't just telomerase, you know. It's, it has capsules of telomerase plus the other vitamins and stuff in it. Okay. Uh, that one is $99 for a bottle of 120. Um, or this, which as I said is a, a different product and it has a lot more stuff in it, uh, it has uh, 60 packages in there and each package contains four or five different little pills that have all the different other nutrients in there. And this is $180 for 60. But again, it's not just the, the telomerase product. So it turns out that you know when they, when they started working at it and looking at doing further research on the telomerase, and that they discovered all these other things that worked in conjunction with the telomerase to help slow down the aging process. You know, things that we're already familiar with, stuff like resveratrol. You know, which people everybody's heard of resveratrol, and they found that taking resveratrol in conjunction with the telomerase, you know, really result. So we're going to pull up another video here. If you could just give me two seconds to punch it in.
this, this is the product that essentially just contains the telomerase and some other vitamins and minerals. This is the one that's $99 for a bottle of 120. Um, and then as I said, this is that plus a bunch of other things. So we're going to just click on this one right now. Recently, we have discovered that the science of human aging is really pretty simple. We age because our cells divide and our telomeres get shorter. What's a telomere? Well, to answer that, let's zoom in to the human's 100 trillion cells. Every cell contains a nucleus with genes and chromosomes. If you zoom in further, you see that the chromosomes are made up of DNA molecules that are 100 million bases long, coiled up like a slinky. There are long, repetitive sequences of DNA at the end of each of our chromosomes. These sequences are called telomeres. When a cell divides, the genetic material inside that cell needs to be copied. This is called DNA replication. During this process, enzymes that replicate a strand of DNA are unable to continue replicating all the way to the end, which causes the loss of some DNA. And the ends, if you remember, are where the telomeres are. At birth, we have about 10,000 bases. But as we age and our cells divide again and again, we lose those bases. And at 5,000 bases, we begin to die at old age. As telomeres get shorter, humans begin to experience the general effects of aging. Loss of muscle, failing memory, poor eyesight, lack of energy, and slow recovery after exercise. The bottom line is this. When cells divide, telomeres shorten. Bad things happen when telomeres. Research we completed in 1997 established that humans also have an enzyme called telomerase that can lengthen telomeres. This research was so significant that in 2009 it was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. I lead a team of scientists pursuing this line of research, and we are virtually the only scientists pursuing it. Our recent collaboration with John Anderson's 30 years of formulating experience is yielding results beyond anything we have ever experienced. It won't be surprising to see many companies trying to enter this space and begin marketing products touted to support telomeres. But I know from my research, not all telomere products are the same. One company is leading the way with a complete system that not only addresses the causes of aging, but also provides a credible product system to effectively support healthy telomeres. This remarkable research may one day reveal the secret of living a longer, healthier life. I am grateful for the opportunity I have to share it with you. Contact the person who shared this video with you. Discover which Isogenics product system is the best for you. Pops the lights back up. Okay. So now obviously, you know the the company that makes this stuff is the one who put the video together, you know. So a lot of it just seems like a commercial for them. I'm not really here to do a commercial for, you know, Isogenics particularly. They just happen to have a very good product. Uh, they, they are sold through multi-level. Those of you who know me at all know that, you know, I'm, I sometimes get involved in multi-levels, not because I want to be involved in multi-level particularly, but because if they may happen to have a very powerful and unique product that you can't get any other way, then I'll sign up and become a member of the multi-level just so I can get that product and pass it along to my patients. But you know, the guy that you saw in the video is the guy who did the research that got the Nobel Prize um, on, the, on the telomerase biology. Uh, so you know, he, he does know what he's talking about. He's, he's working for these guys now. So that was what I wanted to share with everybody, was just that, uh, you know, this, this is pretty exciting stuff. As I said, this is really kind of the bottom line. 
because now we're now we're talking at the DNA you know strand replication level here, which is what really aging is all about. And of course, what they talk about is you know when you when your DNA strands divide and divide and divide and divide over and over again, as you lose your telomeres at the end of the strands, and what happens is the strands themselves start to get shorter and they they don't replicate completely. And that's why we start to see things like people having vision problems and hearing loss and you know, wrinkles in the skin and loss of bone density, loss of muscle mass and all that. A lot of it is because the, the little blueprint that's inside every DNA strand isn't being copied 100%. You know, parts of it are being left behind every time. And that's where the whole aging thing comes in. So I said, this is, this is very exciting. This is really cutting edge because everything else that we knew up until now is really just all about this. And so all the stuff that we know about resveratrol and green tea and you know, all the other antioxidants and so forth are really just operating to support telomere health. And it's the telomeres that really dictate what happens with the aging process. You know. Now, he kind of hinted in there that they're, they're not done yet, they haven't unlocked the secret yet. But I think they're pretty close, <laughs> you know. And certainly, you know, it hasn't been around that long, so we don't have anybody who's been taking telomerase product for 10 years to see if they're now 20 years younger, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. But this is, this is, where it's at, you know, and compared to other things like, you know, I don't know if everybody remembers a few years ago, you know, human growth hormone was touted as being the fountain of youth, and uh, there was all sorts of millionaires who could afford to pay, you know, $550 a shot and get human growth hormone injected into them, you know, once a week for a little while, and we saw remarkable changes, you know, you see, you know, somebody who's 95 out playing tennis with a 30 year old and beating him, you know, this kind of thing. But the problem, of course, with that was that, you know, human growth hormone is indiscriminate. And let's say you happen to have a little teeny tiny cancer tumor somewhere, that growth hormone is going to accelerate its growth tremendously, you know. So that was something that, although there was, you know, there was some pretty good results with it, there was also a very large risk with it, you know. Uh, but something like this, again, because what we're talking about is something that's really going to only affect our normal, natural cells. You know? And I'm sure this is an area where they're probably going to do more research, is that because we know that cancer cells still have DNA, although it has been altered for whatever you know, mechanism, whether it's from free radical oxidation or too much radiation or too many chemicals or whatever, that that DNA molecule is different than a normal one, and that's why it's a cancer cell. It still has telomeres. So, you know, if we go ahead and support telomeres, are we going to be supporting cancer cells? This is something that I guess they, they have to figure out. Or is it that when the cell gets irrevocably altered through whatever process it was that turned it into a cancer cell, that the whole telomere thing is changed anyway? Because we know that. One of the big things with cancer cells that makes them so hard to deal with, again, is that they just keep on replicating over and over and over and over and over again. They don't stop, right? Which is why tumors continue to grow and get bigger. The cancer cell, the DNA has been so altered that it no longer responds to any of the normal mechanisms that keep cellular growth in check. And it's allowed to just reproduce wildly. So, you know, I guess now I don't know I haven't looked into it enough to be able to find anywhere to see what what sort of research they're doing on the effects of telomerase on cancer cells and whether there is in fact any risk of somebody accelerating or preserving cancer cells by using the telomerase. But at the moment I'm taking it and I'm running a risk, I guess, but you know, we'll see. And there's lots of other people that are taking it too. Uh, so far, there doesn't seem to be any evidence that, that it would react that way. But as we said, you know, cancer cells are radically different than normal cells anyway, so we don't know that they would react the same way to something like the telomerase. Wow. Judy. Judy. Hi, Judy. Hi. 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 So that's it. Um, if I'm done, you can all go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was a dig at you. <laughs>
you interested you're interested in health stuff, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I guess stuff before you leave. Okay. That is in fact the, the, the extent of the presentation. Uh, but certainly if anybody has any questions. Um, as you get older, the enzymes in your system get less and less effective or there's less of them. So anything less, that you digest, yeah. like whether it be vitamins or even fruits and vegetables, less and less of nutrients in those are being Yep. Absorbed, right? right? Is that also true if you take this? Well, it depends on, again, which product you take. If you were to take something like this, which is just telomerase, um, who's to say that you're going to be absorbed? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sitting here, you don't have down your tube, and it's yeah. gone, right? The, the products that these people put together have enzymes, or just enzymes, to break it. To ensure that they will, in fact, get those just absorbed. But you know, the, it's a good point because I mean, the reason that we get we get caught again in that vicious cycle that as we age, um, our bodies make less and less enzymes, including the digestive enzymes. Uh, so we don't get as much benefit from the nutrients that we take, whether it's food, whether it's supplements, whatever. <clears throat> Which is part of the reason why. One of the things that I do with a lot of my patients is 24-hour urine analysis to look at how well is their digestive system actually working. Are they digesting and absorbing vitamins and minerals and protein and carbohydrate and fat and so forth? Uh, and in a lot of cases, we find that people just aren't, you know. And so, I mean, I've had people come in who have a problem. Uh, they're taking all sorts of very good quality supplements. And yet they're not having much of an effect, and they're saying, "No, I'm just wasting my money here." You know. And when we do the 24-hour analysis on them, we see, "Well, you're not digesting, you're not absorbing, you're not metabolizing." So yes, you are wasting your money on these supplements because they're not doing you that much good. They're probably doing something, but nowhere near as effective as they would be if we were digesting, absorbing, metabolizing them properly. So one of the first things we do with people always make sure we get their digestive system working. To me. The digestive system is absolutely the key, the core of health in people because that's how we get nutrients which maintain our cells into our systems. But certainly, you know, the um, enzymes are, are hugely important. Uh, not so much digestive enzymes, but metabolic enzymes. You know, every activity that takes place in our body, from you know, the neurological signals running through the nervous system to muscles activating to hormones being secreted is all controlled and mediated by enzymes. Enzymes are all proteins, functional bioproteins. So if we're not digesting, absorbing, metabolizing protein and therefore getting the amino acids from them that our bodies then use to build metabolic and digestive enzymes, uh, the, none of that is, is working properly. So, yeah, I mean, obviously it's, it's true of any supplement, not just this, you know. If you want to get the full benefit of it, you want to try and make sure that your body is capable of absorbing and utilizing it appropriately so that it will do what it is you expect it to do. Is this uh, Russian plant uh, can now be planted in Thunder Bay? And we can, uh, without paying the $200 for hundred <laughs> <laughs> ourselves in our backyard and um, try to. Well, I don't know that you could. You know, I mean, it's quite possible you might be able to go to Siberia, find the right astragalus plant if you knew what it looked like, bring some back here, plant it in Thunder Bay, grow it, and then what? Do you know how to process it to extract the enzyme out of it? We could find out. <laughs> yeah, you could find out. And you could find out you probably need a $500,000 plant to do it. So if you want to go and build your own extraction and metabolizing and functional facility for extracting you know, telomerase enzyme from astragalus, I guess you could do that. I don't know that it would be cheaper than just buying a product from them. I mean, when, when we say that something comes from a natural source of a plant or a fruit or whatever, it sounds very simple. It's just like, okay, well, if I went out and, and ate you know, 10 pounds a day of that stuff, I should be okay. And it's not actually the case because inevitably what they're doing with these things is they're starting out with a natural product. They're figuring out a precise way of separating out one particular element from that natural product.
and then concentrating it, and then maybe adding other elements to it so that it gets digested, absorbed, and functions in the body more effectively. I mean, that's like saying, you know, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother taking vitamin C tablets. I'm just gonna eat 25 pounds of oranges every day. <laughs> and you could do that, but you'd burn out your digestive tract for the acid. <laughs> That's also uh, green tea, you said. Mm -hmm. well, but I have problems with handling caffeine with the green tea. The decaffeinated green tea do the same, combined with the vitamin C and the other thing. And what the same it's help. tell me. It helps, it's not really. Yeah. Do you need that caffeine? No. So you can do. You can, do, you can do decaffeinated green tea, and that's going to be a very good antioxidant. Yeah. But would it uh, combine this, this? Well, yeah, it's going to be helpful. It's not going to replace it. No. You know? And so, I mean, I wouldn't go ahead and just buy straight telomerase and take green tea and figure you get the same results. You need all the rest of it. All the nutrients right here. Yeah. And you need, and you need, and you need all of it. And you need them in the right proportions. You know? Yeah. The, the thing is that, you know, I mean, these, uh, everybody hates paying money for anything, you know, but in life you get what you pay for, right? You know? And when it comes to dealing with your health, you have to decide what you want to do. Uh, these companies hire experts, you know, people who've got PhDs in biochemistry and so forth to figure out what are the precise right combinations of things, you know, so much of this and so much of that that come together and they do lots of research to see which ones work the best. Right? So it's it's pretty much impossible to replicate that kind of research in your kitchen and just say, well, I'll just take a little bit of green tea and I'll take some vitamin tea and I'll take this and I'll take that. Or we're, yeah. or we're the same way as this product and then I don't have to pay for it. It's not going to work that way. I was watching a program on 60 Minutes also, a program on uh, life extension. Yes. The scientists were working the same kind of mice. Yeah. <clears throat> and they came to the conclusion that if they restricted the caloric, the caloric intake, yeah. calories, yeah. but increased a really rich nutrient diet, yeah. and combined with exercise, yeah. that their mice, they ended up living twice as long yeah. as regular mice. Yeah. So ethically speaking, they couldn't do a human study, so they did it to themselves. Yeah. So they're now taking this low caloric, high nutrient diet with exercise, and lots of green vegetables and everything involved with yeah. that. Yeah. And you're, you're seeing they can extend their own life. Right? Yeah. Well, that's all the same. That's all is the same uh, research that they use to sell resveratrol. Mm -hmm. Because resveratrol does the same thing. You know, the calorie reduction as a means of life extension has been known for a long, long time. And they say you know, part of the reason why people don't live that long is because they eat too many too many calories, but they eat a very low nutrient, high caloric diet. Yeah. But it has to be in combination with good exercise oh, yeah. regime. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's the, you can also look at like you know the, a number of years ago. Did anybody ever watch that? It was on TV for a while when it was happening. The Life Extension Project out in Colorado, where they built a bubble. Yeah. yeah. They built a big bubble in Colorado, and they put. I forget how many people it was. It was like, you know, 24 or 28 people in there, a number of couples. And inside the bubble, everything was absolutely pure. The air was filtered, the water was filtered, they grew all their own food in hydroponic gardens, and uh, they, there was, they were protected from all, you know, airborne pollutants and waterborne pollutants mm -hmm. and chemicals of any kind. And uh, they all went through a complete uh, complete metabolic and medical workup before they went in and their, you know, their metabolic and physiological age was determined and everything else. They went in there, they lived in there for two years and at the end of the time they tested them again and they just said, you know, um, all they had to do was move back into the bubble and stay there for the rest of their lives mm -hmm. and they could all expect to live to about 160. <laughs> but, you know, you can't live in a bubble. <laughs> but they certainly found out that, you know, a big part of the reason for us aging the way we do is because of the environment that we live in is so heavily polluted. And the foods we eat. 
and the foods that we eat. They're so low in nutrition, but high in chemicals. Uh, one thing we don't hear very often, but I think it does make a difference, is properly chewing our food. Yep. And it's yep. just overlooked all the time. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that is another big factor. And, and the other thing that, that doesn't get talked about because of the culture that we live in is taking the time to sit down and enjoy and savor your food. <laughs> yeah. And get yourself into a nice, calm, relaxed frame of mind mm -hmm. while you're eating. Because, of course, nowadays, you know, everybody's lives are so busy, the kids are on the go, you know, you got to run and drop this one off at karate practice and take this one to fancy, you know, and go pick up dad from work. And, you know, so people are eating on the go all the time. That's why fast food restaurants are so common and so you know well utilized. It's because no one has time to cook anymore. They still don't have time to sit down and take half an hour to eat dinner. It's a big waste of time, right? So, so chewing just goes right along with that. You know, people are always in such a hurry that it's you know bite, bite, swallow. You know? And you know, get out the door because we got something to do. But yeah, you're exactly right. You know, if people took the time chew their food really thoroughly because all digestion begins in the mouth. You know? We have you know, salivary amylase, which is the enzyme that starts the entire digestive process, has to have a chance to mix thoroughly with the food, and the chewing of the food is the first mechanical breakdown that takes place. You know? I always tell people all the time, when I've, when I've done a, a urinalysis on somebody and see that they just got digesting the food, and I suspect they're probably not chewing it very well either, you know, I'll say, you know, if I handed you a, you know, a six foot long, 24 inch in diameter log and a book of paper matches and told you to build a fire and that's all you had to work with, how successful would you be? <laughs> and they say, not very, you know. And then I'll say, okay, but if I give you a knife and a hatchet, you know, and we let you chop that log down, you know, make some fuzz sticks and, uh, you know, splinter it down to a little small thing that you can get going. You get a fire started then with some paper matches. And they go, oh, of course. And so, well, that's why you have to chew your food. <laughs> there has to be some mechanical, physical breakdown of those molecules in order for your digestive enzymes to have any chance to get going and work on them. So, you're absolutely right. You know, chewing food is really important, too. And that's just part of the whole hurry up and go you know, lifestyle that we live today. Calvin? Well, I think our system has to know what's coming at it, too. You know, you taste it and you say, well, what, if you're actually tasting some of the food you're eating, you say, what yeah. am I eating? You know, you just swallow it, and you expect the rest yeah. of your system to figure it out once it gets down there, you know? Well, yeah, no, you're absolutely right, Calvin, because we have, a, we have a huge number of chemical sensors in our mouth, in our tongue, in the floor of our mouth, in our cheeks, that are designed to chemically analyze our food and tell if we keep it in our mouth long enough and chew it for a while, and it has time for those sensors to do their job, it tells the brain, what percentage of protein is there, what percentage of fat is there, how much carbohydrate, is there essential fatty acids, is there, you know, whatever. And the brain can then take that information, send the appropriate yeah. signals through the nerve system to the intestines so that we produce the right combination of digestive enzymes to digest the food. But if the food only spends two seconds in our mouth <laughs> before we swallow it, that never gets a chance to happen. And that also contributes to you know a lack of proper digestion and absorption. Trudy. Do you have a comment about Mary Lou Henner and others um, <coughs> focus on not eating fruit with anything else, eating veggies with proteins, eating carbohydrates with veggies, but not carbohydrates and proteins? Not starches and proteins. You mean food combining? Yeah, that's. Yeah. It's quite elaborate. Uh, it's it's very elaborate, and as far as I can tell, it's utter nonsense. Ah. Because if you think about it, lots of foods contain. I mean, one of, one of the most basic principles of food combining is that you never ever 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 eat protein and carbohydrate at the same meal, right? It's one of the basic. Basic principles. So, what about beans? You know, beans are about forty percent protein, forty percent carbohydrate, and twenty percent fiber. So, how did that happen? Who designed a bean? Oh yeah, 
God. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, if we have food that already has protein and carbohydrate right in it, how would that then even work if we have to separate them? And, and the reality is, too, if you look at how the digestive system works, we do different digesting of different things in different places and at different times. You know, uh, you know we have salivary amylase in the mouth, which begins the digestion of starch and carbohydrate. It doesn't do anything about protein, right? But it starts that digestion in the mouth. Food gets into the stomach. The stomach contains high levels of hydrochloric acid, which are necessary to break down the chemical bonds that hold protein molecules together, and fat. But very little carbohydrate digestion takes place in the stomach. Okay? Primarily, we have protein and fat digestion, the beginnings of it taking place in the stomach. Then the food moves from the stomach into the small intestine. Well, the first place it goes is the duodenum, which is the first 12 to 14 inches of the small intestine. And we have tons of bicarbonate secreted from the pancreas into the duodenum, which is an acid buffering system, which shuts down the, the hydrochloric acid and alkalinizes the food, because at that point, we're going to start digesting carbohydrate again. right? And so it has to be alkaline in order for that to happen. Plus, the liver, at this point, is dumping bile through the gallbladder into the small intestine. And the bile further emulsifies the fat that was initially broken down in the stomach. And it also helps to break down protein further as well. And then as the food moves out of the duodenum into the small intestine, we have the small intestine brush border enzymes that are all substrate specific. So protein digesting enzymes will digest protein. Carbohydrate digesting enzymes will digest the carbohydrate. And the fat generally gets absorbed out of the small intestine into the lymphatic system through lacteals, which then deliver it back to the liver for further breakdown. So when you look at all of that, it really doesn't make any difference whether you eat protein and carbohydrate and starch together or fruit or this or that. It doesn't matter. Okay? The system is beautifully designed to deal with everything separately anyway. So when I look at the, and I mean, it isn't just Mary Lou Henner, you know, a couple by the name of the Diamonds wrote books on food combined, made lots of money, they had all kinds of people, celebrities included, following their dietary plan, and they only ate this with that, and that with that, and everything else, and said they got great results, they felt fantastic, whatever. And I think most of the results came from the fact that they also stressed that you should be eating, you know, whole, organic, natural food, mm -hmm. not you know, K-Fry and pizza, you know? So, of course, you're going to get good results if you're eating that way. Yeah. I, they, their plan was called Fit for Life, mm -hmm. and nothing but fruit before noon. Yeah. I tried it for a while, and I'm way happier yeah. with a chunk of cheese and a bowl of oatmeal, like yeah. a, a little protein and a nice, healthy, Carb in the morning. I go yeah. longer, and yeah. and fruit. I understand kind of this cleansing thing will cleanse in the morning, yeah. but it didn't work to sustain me. No, I was hungry every time I turned no. around. It's not going to sustain anybody. No. You had a question, Roger. or has it already been answered? Or are you just waving your hands at me? <laughs> me? Yeah, yeah. me. Well, I was just like this. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you have a question? But I do have a question. Okay. Um, Back to the telomeres. Yeah. Um, what if the telomeres didn't break, or didn't break as frequently? <clears throat> well, obviously that that would be a good thing. Yeah. Well, in testing done, and you know, glutathione. Yep. Uh, you know all about it. it glutathione is the protect. ultimate antioxidant in the body. Yeah, and it helps protect each individual cell yeah. against damage, yeah. including damage from the uh, telomeres breaking, breaking, yeah. and sustaining the cell longer, 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 yeah. hence leading to yeah. a longer, older life, right. let's put it that way. Yeah. And I know that they were the first, Immunotech Research was the first company 
to do double blind placebo studies yeah. with seniors, 65 and over. Yeah. Uh, it started and it's still ongoing now, but um, uh, they're doing that study right now. Yeah. And uh, it'll be interesting, she'll be out very shortly. Yeah. But to see what happens when they do give them the product that boosts the glutathione levels in the cells and shock sure. and slows down the aging process. Yeah. So that's a double blind placebo study that's going on right now. Yeah. Well, and the interesting thing about those kind of studies is that which um, there are a number of things that can slow down and stop and protect telomeres. But it, so far, I haven't seen anything other than telomerase which actually reverses the process and builds the telomeres back up again, which the telomerase does do. We can, yeah, we can stop telomere destruction or we can slow down telomere destruction. We can protect telomeres just like we protect the rest of the cell with something like glutathione. But I haven't seen any research that would show that glutathione would actually reverse the process and increase the length or the amount of the telomere again, the telomerase does do that. Well, if it does the production of new cellular life, it would thereby protect the telomere longer and longer and longer from that being destroyed. And of course, it's a new cell with new telomeres. That's what I'm thinking. That's, no, that's not automatic though. You know, you can you can say that you might hope that that would happen, but we don't have evidence that it does. Well, you might be able to stop telomere degradation at a yeah. certain point and see it's not going to get any worse yeah. from here. But we don't have evidence that glutathione will actually then increase the length of the telomere, make it longer again, which then reverses the age-related decline that's taking place in the body. But telomerase does. Well, I mean, that's um, studies that are ongoing, of course, and yeah. uh, I think will prove to be very beneficial to yeah. the general public. Oh, of course they will. All that stuff does. The more information we've got about the exact workings of the process at the cellular DNA level, the better, obviously. Yeah. Right. What is the goal of um, the isogenic product? At this point, what is their goal? Like when they're make money. Um, the aging, the aging process. <laughs> so is it slow down right now? Is it a uh, time frame? Is. What are they saying that it will? I know that it's replacing. Yeah. But are they, have they? And then you said, uh, and there's a, another part to that question is. Um, you mentioned that they, they don't have a secret yet. Well, what the secret to what? Well, I also said <coughs> he comment he makes that comment, but I think it's very tongue in cheek because I think they do have a secret and this is it. You know? Got it. Okay. You know? But I think he's I think he's being very PC and trying not to come out with make a blanket statement like, okay, <laughs> this is it, folks. This is the whole. This is the fountain of youth. This is what Ponce de Leon was looking for yeah. right here. You know. And, you know, if you take enough telomerase, you know, you become Benjamin Button and in 10 years you'll be 25 again, you know. But he's not going to say that because you know, he, he can't back that up with, with the research that they've got. But research is ongoing, so you know, who knows. They may find other things out in the future with their further research where they can tweak the product even further and get better results. I mean, that's the comment. And I mean, it's, I mean, if you're asking me, you know, what, what is Isagenic's goal as a company, not just in terms of, are you just talking about the telomerase product or the products in general? They're the, the telomerase product. So you purchased the product. Mm -hmm. And so what, um, of what value were you looking for? Because there, no, there are no guarantees, I understand that. And you went for the blood test. So now what is it that you hope to gain out of this product? Well, me personally? You and the company, what are they promoting? Oh, they're just, they're just promoting that, that you should see improvements in your health and, and indicators that would, that would show that possibly you um, are not necessarily reversing, but seeing changes in terms of how you feel about age-related changes. And supposedly, there are people who are a product who, you know, their hair has stopped going gray and is starting to get color back in again. 
certainly I, I met a guy who has been on the product for about a year now who's, what is he, he's 64 I think, and um, he, he was a, a gym owner and has been involved in athletics all his life and he told me that right now at 64 he's stronger than he was at 25. And at 25, he was bodybuilding, lifting weights, working out all the time, you know. And he's saying that right, right now, he's bench pressing 394 pounds and, and doing squats with over 500, you know, and deadlifting about 600 pounds at 64 years of age. What does he weigh? Uh, he weighs about 212 or something. He's a big guy, you know, and uh, and he just said, you know, he's, he's he's never felt this great even when he was in his twenties. And your personal goal? So, um, my personal goal is just to see how I feel. You know, I mean, all this stuff when I buy it, I try it on myself to see if it makes a difference to me, because I'm pretty healthy. I've been pretty healthy for the last two thirds of my life, at least. You know, when I was in my twenties story about you know, yeah. once I smartened up and started to stop doing foolish things, you know, and started trying to look after my health. I've been pretty healthy and so I definitely typically find, you know, I, there are products that I will bring in that don't make me feel a whole lot different, but when I give them to the patients, they feel fantastic, you know, because they they're in a different position than I am. So I just want to see how I feel, you know, if it if it makes a noticeable difference to me. In terms of how I feel, or my strength, or my endurance, or my oxygen utilization, or anything else. And of course, I'm going to do live cell on myself, and, you know, urine test, and all that stuff to see if I see noticeable changes, you know, because I'm probably not going to do the telomere test again for maybe three or four or five months, you know, give it a, a good chance to, to make a difference. But I'm doing live cell and urine every month and just see what's happening. Is there, is there you know, noticeable changes yet? Great. If you're doing some sports, can you put yourself through some uh, measured uh, testing, strength testing or endurance? Yeah. Maybe timed or yeah. Lift or maybe well, I'm going to be doing all that too. Yeah. I'll be doing all that too. You can see. I mean, I don't do a lot of, of working out anymore just because I don't have time. <laughs> but I mean, I do I do do some, and it'd be interesting to see if if I become stronger or have longer endurance. For riding a bike or rowing on the rowing machine or whatever. I'm just going to use myself as a bit of a guinea pig to see how, how it makes me feel. That's You're bouncing off people every day there, so you, yeah. you might feel a little stronger. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I just started it, so oh, you know, okay. I haven't, haven't really had a chance to, to give it a try. Another question. Yes, watching your program, again, documentary on food sciences, yeah. and they were talking about uh, the evolution of humans, races, various races of the human species, yeah. and each each one, because they're isolated in a certain area for a certain period of time, get uh, adapted to certain types of foods in their diet. Yeah. Not only foods in their diet from that region, but also sort of seasonal foods yeah. that they consume, like spring food, summer food, fall yeah. food, those kind of things, and. With the telomerase uh, giving you like lo longevity, but you also have to deal with the inflammation and the oxidative stress of foods that are not normally associated with the diet from this, the area that your origin is. Mm -hmm. So, for example, they gave an example of the Swiss or Northern Europeans where they became adapted to consuming milk products. And they have far more adaptation to consuming those milk products through evolution than any other speed, any other group of humans in the, in the world who yeah. cannot consume those products. Yeah. But yet, a lot of the products are in a lot of food, so that you're consuming them, you're getting the oxidative stress, and you get the inflammation, and then you're you're trying to uh, extend your life longevity, but by consuming these foods that are not normally in your diet from the point of origin, you're sort of counter, counterbalancing both, so you're not really getting any effect. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. Though. Well, that's this is the food science behind it, so. Food science depends on that. Monsanto can try to attempt to food science and says everything they're doing is fine. Okay. So then these have no, no association with agribusiness. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just saying. That so they're you, saying, you, uh, you, like, for example, here in our area, science here in our area, native indigenous population, right. they would eat like a lot of proteins, they would eat a lot of berries, yeah. a lot of fish. Yeah. But now they eat high starchy foods yeah. that they're being fed. Yeah. And they're naturally coming out with things like diabetes and yeah. hypertension and yeah. obesity yeah. all because they're so far away from the original diet that they're accustomed to for the last thousands of years yeah. well i mean i think you could say that about any culture anywhere on the surface of the planet so i mean even though you can take a supplement whether it be yeah. nutrient supplements of all sorts or telomerase supplement you also have to take into account the, well, you the food should. that you consume you right? and your point of origin so that you're not counteracting it with the inflammation and and. Uh, but what's your point of origin? Well, that you have to know. You have to do a little bit of genetic programming. Like I know I come from from Northern Europe, right? Yeah. But yeah. also part of me comes from Indonesia. Indonesia. So right. there's two different things going on there. So yeah. there's and so how do, those, how do those things affect each other? Exactly. Yeah. Well, and so well since they're multiculturalism, yeah. Yeah. but I so mean, if you're, you're purely from Northern Europe, or yeah. if you're from India, yeah. somebody from India could not really consume the foods from Northern Europe without having some sort of effect on them. Creating True. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you can... You can so you have to be very careful when you're looking at nutrient supplements, right. too. That you're, you just have to ask, where's the nearest McDonald's? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you can you can get your head wrapped up into all this kind of stuff and twist yourself in knots if you want to. The questions are insoluble. Mm -hmm. you know? But the common ones are like milk, uh, eggs, uh, certain yeah. starches that are not being digested. Yeah. And then, therefore, if you're doing this, will help, but it's sort of counteracting the actual yeah. beneficial effect. Well, I'm not trying to say that this is the nectar of the gods and it will resolve all no, your but problems also and you don't have to, have to change account. anything else. Like know? for yourself, you're looking to get more youthful, yeah. but you have to consider And how diet. do you know I haven't already considered that? Yeah, you probably have. <laughs> 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 the thing is that you better start reading all the labels and even milk, what is in really, in, what they put in that cow before you get that milk. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there, there are very, very few people in world that can have milk. I know. Uh, milk, is not you know milk is the most allergenic yeah. food of the face of the planet. Yeah. But then it's also the meat else. that comes from that cow. Yeah. So much junk, junk put yeah. in the hormones, you know, yeah. hormones. Yeah. So we, and, and we so, talked about that earlier. Obviously, you know, it's it's a good thing to try to eat as clean as you possibly can. Oh, yeah, try and eat, eat a diet that you know is consistent with your blood type. You know, yeah. and consistent Absolutely. with your with with your ethnic origins and your body type, and try to eat this you know in a way that you're taking in a minimal amount of chemicals. Yeah, that's what you can't right. avoid them completely. It's impossible. Then you're going to have far greater effect from these supplements. Well, yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Yep. Yeah. No, I know. After you told me. Okay. True. Um, the Davis who wrote Wheat Belly says that unlike animals, when a mother plant and a father plant get together and give their uh, genetic material to the baby plant, the baby plant gets all of it, not just half. Yeah. And in the creation of that new baby plant, proteins are created that may not be recognized by our body. Would you care to comment on that? Or, or all the proteins recognized by our body. You no. see, he never, he never said this, this, and this, and this protein is not recognized, but these are. He didn't do that. No, he didn't. Okay, well, you have to comment some more because I've run out of comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if, if we're going to go down that road, you know, certainly his, his point is well taken, which is that. You know, even prior to fancy stuff like gene splicing, that 
humans have been messing around with plant genetics for a long time by taking you know, genetic material from this plant and genetic material from this plant and putting it together when those would never, ever, ever have come together by any natural means because they're maybe separated by continents, you know, and, and differences so that they, they would never happen. And then creating, you know, hybrid type plants that, as you say, you know, uh, have totally new protein that never existed before. One of the things we always have to remember is that this car, this vehicle that we run around the planet in is about a 20,000 year old model and there have been no updates. There have been no recalls, there have been no upgrades, you know. We're stuck with the same thing we had then. One of the things that has happened from global warming is that you know the, the glaciers are all shrinking and we're finding people that have been frozen in glaciers for the last 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 years all over the planet, right? And of course all of them when they get found get whisked off to the nearest scientific facility and studied extensively, right? And the conclusion that all of these scientific facilities have come to on all of these so-called ice mummies that they've studied is that they're just like us. They are anatomically and physiologically no different from us. Okay? But the world that they lived in was certainly radically different than ours. And you know, most of those people uh, spent a good portion of their time running around looking for food because there wasn't a McDonald's in every corner or a Safeway's. You know, Safeway or Shop Easy or Costco that they could just go to and get food and had to go kill something, you know, or drag something out of a stream or dig it out of the ground or pull it off of the bush or get it some way, somehow. A lot of them just followed the herds, you know, they followed the animals to see where the food was. And yes, so we were looking at seasonal variation and geographic variation, you know, you couldn't wander too far. You know, way back then, you know, you couldn't hop on a plane and go, you know, fly to South America to get something to eat. So you were stuck with whatever was growing near right where you were and whatever season it was. So there was always a constant variation in food. You never ate the same thing over and over and over again like you can now. You know, if somebody likes a particular thing, they can eat it every day, you know, for years and years and years. Well, you couldn't do that then. And our systems are not designed for that because they're designed for variation because if you keep eating the same thing over and over and over again, you use up all the enzymes that digest that thing, right? And then, then you've got nothing left for anything else that you might want to eat. Um, and also, as, 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 as he mentions, as Davis mentions in his book, you know, there are these new proteins, these hybrid proteins that are synthetically created by men that our bodies just don't recognize. You know, we don't have the specific enzyme systems to break those down, which is why the, the current you know wheat that is being sold as wheat, which is designed specifically to get the maximum amount of yield per acre, in other words, for purely um, commercial purposes, with no nutritional consideration at all. We're just looking to see how big of a seed head can we grow on that plant, you know, so we get the maximum amount of wheat tonnage off of each acre. And we have no concern whatsoever what that does when you put it into your body. And then your body can't, simply can't process it because the proteins are totally foreign to us. The body looks at it like the styrofoam or something. There's, there's no way of actually breaking it down. So that's why we get the bloating and everything else. So yeah, I mean, all those things are things that we, that we take into consideration. And that, you know, certainly none of which uh, really negates the importance of this, <laughs> you know. This is still major, major breakthrough stuff as far as anti-aging is concerned. Yes, all the rest of it is still in play, you know, and we still need to be concerned about what we eat and what we put into our bodies and whether or not we exercise appropriately and drink enough water and get enough rest and find significant ways of reducing our stress load, you know. All of that stuff is obviously still true and you should still be doing it, you know not say, oh yeah, forget about all that stuff, just take this little magic pill here and everything will be fine, you know, and you'll, you'll drop off the years just like you drop off pounds. Not going to happen, you know. So, so will they be able to tell soon whether that has an effect on the cancer cell? 
Um, again, I don't know. I haven't read in any of their material. It's a question that I've, that I've gotten for them. At some point I'll be able to talk to the guys who are actually doing the research and find out if they are in fact researching what effect them rays might have on a cancer cell. It's just going to make the cancer cell harder to beat by continually protecting the telomeres of the cancer cell to allow it to continue to multiply. So, I don't know the answer to that yet. I guess it would take a couple of years? Or, I mean, if they started it's out with people... Yeah. Well, I mean, they're, they're going to do what they do with everything. They'll do it in mice first because, you know, mice age a lot faster than people. So, you know, in a human, you might have to wait 20 years to see if it's going to actually do something. Whereas with a, with a mouse or whatever, you can find out in three or four years. And, and the mouse they had had with the bad hair. Yeah. And most, the other mouse, I wonder if both mice started with bad hair. Should be appropriate. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, did they both start? Well, that's, that's the implication. That's the implication, you know, that they, they took these mice and artificially aged them. Now, we don't know how they did that. I guess they fed them some toxic chemicals or something. So artificially aged them. And, uh, you know, as with most laboratory mice, they're probably all clones. So they have identical DNA, you know, so you know that they'll, if this one reacts this way, this one reacts that way, it's not because they have different DNA, right? They all have the same yeah. DNA. Because when you were you know. saying, or you were saying, like the absorption, yeah. So that meant that at that age, yeah. the condition they were in, they absorbed the telomere. Yeah. Yeah. They were able to absorb it at that at that. At that stage, stage. yeah, that's their aging yeah. process. Yeah. yeah, they were still able to absorb the telomere, yeah. yeah. and they were able to make Even a difference. They, yeah. yeah. Watch another program. <laughs> Sixty yeah. minutes also. Yeah. It's about this group of people of southern Russia in the mountains, yeah. and they all reputedly live to oh, well, well over 100, 110, 120, yeah. some of them, maybe yeah. 300. And they studied their, their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. and they ate fresh food every day, they yeah. drank fresh water every day, yeah. they had um, exercise every day, and no pollution. No pollution. No Even though they suffered strokes and heart attacks and all these same things that everybody else does, they survived them because they're just a lot tougher. But when they took them from their mountain dwellings and put them in the city, they died like everybody else. Yeah. And then they figured out that the key factor of what making them so old was they had old people in their culture that are at the top of the pile. So that anybody who's younger needs advice, they go to their elders. And so when that was removed, their purpose for living longer lives was also removed. And so they said the psychological factor of being important in your life, having a function in your life, made the difference for them living longer, as well as a healthy lifestyle. And no chemicals in their food. Yeah, no chemicals in food, but also an importance. We relegate all our old people to old folks' homes so they yeah. can just sit there and yeah. don't wait. Yeah. Don't These people do not. They, yeah. Their people are at the top of the pile yeah. in their social culture. Yeah. China too. Makes they a difference. Say, they say that the oldest average age of people are those in Okinawa. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 86 years old. Yeah. And it isn't coral calcium they're chewing on. No. It's um, all the fruits and vegetables, growing your own food, everything. Yeah. Same mature thing there, but they are proven to be the oldest in the world. And around the yeah, they have the oldest age. average age. Yeah. And that's yeah. also calorie reduction. They yeah. go to bed hungry. Yeah. They never, never eat to full. No. But their children are all obese, and they're all eating hamburger and McDonald's. Children, mm -hmm. and grandchildren of those people. Oh, yeah. And drinking pot for you get they very. They completely uh, change their ways. Their ways are going. Well, you know, I, I think we can all agree that nutrition and diet has a huge effect on health in general and definitely on aging, for sure. Well, I think that the most deal, it's already proven that through a time will uh, uh, keep the most alive 30 to 50 percent longer. That's a, that's a study completed. Yeah. yeah. That's why the human studies are already on Nobody's just speeding and glutathione is helpful for combating the aging process as well. Yeah. Doesn't this product have glutathione in it? This product? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. 
I haven't seen it. No. No, it doesn't. I was just looking on the internet where they had a... But, it, but the thing is, if you, if you look at how the human body functions, the nutrients that are in here would assist your body in making more of its own growth. Just a comment. Everybody should just dive right in. I'll tell you, I can't, part of my family comes from longevity. They're the Sitch family that's in Thunder Bay here. They were the first ones, I swear, that, that probably had vitamins yeah. and minerals. They were, as soon as they came out. So they, they dove into, they had the biggest farms here. So it was my great great grandfather who brought apples, who was part of the country in Heimers. And they all settled there. So they were always the pioneers. They were cutting edge. They lived, my great great grandfather lived on here before. I come from, I'm the fifth generation all living, and my children are the sixth generation that were all living. It was the first family recorded in Canada. But, however, there was probably lots of families, they just never recorded it for history. So their generations, the older ones, they lived, the, his children, with my great grandmother lived to their 90s, all of them. There's 10 kids. Then the next generation is my grandmother, who started when she was uh, welding at uh, during the war at Cancar in the plains. Started smoking, drinking, <laughs> and and not eating properly, and started taking prescription medications. She died at 65. The next generation is my mother who was into prescription medications and ate at all the, the uh, food outlets and she died at 70. So, uh, and my sister who is 44 died of cancer and she was the first person in the entire family, both sides of my family that had cancer. So you can see how it's dwindling but those older ones jumped in <laughs> And we're, we're into cutting edge nutrition, all the older ones, and whatever came next, they jumped into it. So guess where I've come from? Because I really fell um, onto that side of the family that I took a look at them. And my father's side of the family was the Bacaris, and they all are the same. They're from Sault Ste. Marie and Thunder Bay. And they all lived to their 90s. My father is now 89 years old. And they lived not with cutting edge um, vitamins and minerals, but it was their, the Italian lifestyle, which was chew your food and eat at the table for hours. And that's and have fun. And they all ate from their gardens, including my right. father to this day. He, he has never mm. eaten that's outside of their own garden. So you can see that, jump in with the cutting edge, try it. One of, one of the things that's happening though is our world is becoming so polluted. They did a study all across Canada where they were lucky enough to be able to get several generations of the same families. And they looked at you know, great grandparents, grandparents, parents and children. And they did blood tests on all of them and looked for toxic chemicals, benzenes, heavy metals, petrochemical byproducts, all that sort of stuff. And they found that in every case, all across the country, in every family, the older people had the least amount. And you'd say, well, they've been on the planet longer, why wouldn't they have a resort and everything else? And they found that the children always had the highest levels. Sure. Parents had less grandparents had less and great grandparents had even less because the planet is just becoming more and more and more polluted as we go along and so it's not a question of how long you've been here but when you arrived yeah. and what state you were arriving into and they're not mucking with the food like they do now no matter what you try or it's just about everything has that roundup and whatever, all that junk in it. Yeah. And that shortens the life that creates all kinds of cancer and you name it. There's DDT in the polar ice caps that's been banned yeah. for 40 years. And, and I was yeah. surprised the, I found like years ago, the cans that yeah. are painted white inside, they look so nice. Mm -hmm. that, that's not good. No. You're, you're better, you're better so, you know, yeah. to have just the can. 
Again, you know, there, there's a couple of different schools of thought there. You know, you can you can take hydrochloric acid with every meal, or you can do things to try to help make your body able to produce more hydrochloric acid so you can digest food better. By just having a healthier lifestyle and healthier exactly. diet. Yeah. Exactly. Jennifer. Yeah, just back to this. I'm just wondering, is this something that they intend? For a person to take for life, then, or could you take it for sporadic, or just like would you taking it for a couple months? Well, well, I, would, I would think that it would be something you would probably yeah. want to take the rest of your life because the minute you stop taking it, the telomere damage starts again. So it's just like vitamin C or vitamin D or any other nutrient that you take, you're not going to take it and say, Well, I'll just take it for a couple of years and then I'll stop. You, know? you need it every day. Eat it all the time, so it's going to be like eating food. <laughs> you know, the reason that we, we need all these things is because our food doesn't have it anymore. You know, our food is so depleted in nutrients that you know we have to take supplements in order to get the minimum requirement of what we need to survive. Now, you know, you don't have to take anything, you, know, you could just Go ahead and eat whatever you feel like eating and see what happens. Those are the people that have heart attacks at 45. Because Perfect example. You put the garbage can in the corner, you see what they eat now. Yeah. <laughs> Look at all the wrappers in there. That's <laughs> right. And these are college students, right? Supposedly yep. educated. These are our future leaders. Brian, uh, I just saw a report that the new disease, passive reflex disease, created by the pharmaceutical. 90% of people with acid reflux are low in hydrochloric acid. Yeah. Not high, they're yeah. low. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is because the symptoms of low acid are virtually identical to those of high acid. Yeah. And so there's there's an assumption made there that, you know, oh, if you're having gastric reflux or you know, any of that sort of stuff, you must have too much acid, so we'll give you a drug to lower it. Yeah. And it's just a ploy to sell more pharmaceuticals. Absolutely. Same as the only, they still give antibiotics to people who have viral infections. It's <laughs> pointless, but it makes money. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Well, if there is nothing else, I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you all for coming.